Hello and welcome to the What's New in Trimble Business Center version 5.00 release. In this presentation, I'll be talking about some main messaging and features in TBC version 5, uh, as well as additional features and enhancements, as well as all of the TBC resources that the team works on so very diligently to teach you and uh, to make these fe features much more accessible. All right, here we go. Main messaging and features. You'll notice that TBC version 5 has jumped a couple of spots in, in, um, along with version 4. We were in uh, the 410 range. Um, we are now the complete survey and construction office software, enabling field-to-finish workflows with confidence. Uh, this message isn't anything new for the geospatial channel, um, but the and construction bit, those two simple words um, mean a whole lot of uh, more functionality, more unification, and uh, just a better user experience for you. Let me show you what that means. All right, so field to finish workflows, what is that? Well, we uh, pride ourselves in TBC to be able to take your field data, whether that's from Trimble sources or third-party sources, and being able to work with that data. Um, not XYZ, uh, CSV points, but actual data information. There you can see a screenshot of some SX10 data with your total station vectors being able to change things like uh, rod heights, for instance, um, where you'd be able to see what the rod heights were in the field, the um, vector lengths, some precision elements. So working with the data is a uh, unique selling point of Trimble Business Center versus some other CAD packages. And then our industry-leading and world-class adjustment packages and COGO routines, things like uh, uh, least squares adjustments in network adjustment, uh, traverse uh, routines, uh, editing level data, uh, world-class GNSS baseline processing. So all of that, again, working with the raw data into TBC. And then CAD and drafting. Um, a bit that's really been improving over the last couple of years and releases um, the ability to have TBC be that single source package for survey and uh, construction professionals to do line work and point creation and feature coding and then um, also the ability to add uh, sheets and printing uh, paper deliverables whether that's custom plan cross sections plan and profiles uh, sheets for deliverables there. Surfaces and volumes, being able to digitally compute very accurate surface quantities and volume quantities from your field data or any data for that matter. TBC takes a, agno a data agnostic approach to these types of deliverables. So once you get the data in, whether you walk it, fly it, drive it, uh, we want it in TBC and being able to process and uh, compute surfaces and volumes from that data. Designing uh, parametric designs for corridors. So um, for my money, the uh, very low barrier to uh, uh, entry in, the, in terms of knowledge and knowing um, corridor terminology and how the software is um, a pretty intuitive package uh, based on instructions. That is for roadway and also for tunneling corridors. And then a couple of new things brought on by the, the construction piece that I alluded to earlier. So uh, data prep, taking data from PDF sources, from designers, from engineers, and uh, taking that and making it something that a machine control model can interpret and read for staking in the field, for topo um, with your Trimble Access, your SCS 900 field collection software. As well as takeoff and mass haul workflows. So being able to quantify uh, moving uh, uh, materials, whether that's uh, rock or creating subgrades, um, being able to take off from plans to bid and win additional work. So those workflows now a core message and part of TBC version 5. 
And then our specialty solutions, um, sometimes you'll hear those called vertical applications, not literally vertical, but vertical meaning they're kind of um, specific to a workflow. Um, this screenshot here shows some aerial photogrammetry data, but things like scanning, tunneling, drilling, piling, and dynamic compaction, utility modeling, GIS, um, uh, mobile mapping now added in version 5. So all of these things make up our field-to-finish workflows that we promote in TBC version 5. All right, so main messaging. TBC and Business Center Heavy Civil Edition, so that's BCHCE, from the Civil Engineering and Construction Group at Trimble um, have merged into a single product. One of the reasons why we went to the big step up to version 5 to indicate, yeah, something pretty serious went on here. Um, some of those workflows there that I showed on the last slide uh, are, are being incorporated now onto the geospatial side in this presentation, um, whereas before those were traditionally available to the Business Center Heavy Civil Edition uh, software. I'll explain more later. Data integration, always a big message for us. We want to bring, uh, we want TBC to be the geospatial and construction data hub for your Trimble and third-party data. So how we've done that in version 5 and promoted that in version 5 is support new support for the Trimble mobile mapping MX9 hardware system as well as high-speed laser scanning support. So a drag-and-drop interface for those TZF files coming in from the Trimble TX6 and TX8 laser scanners as well as support for Pharaoh's FLS file format. Uh, point cloud deliverables with automatic feature automated feature extraction and enhanced cutting plane workflows. Those two um, can stand alone independently. They can also tie in together. I will talk a little bit more about those and show you a quick little demo on that. And then localization for all of you Terra model users out there or former Terra model users out there. Um, the TML is back, except for this time it's called the Trimble, Trimble macro language. Um, being able to write custom commands for TBC and using them and distributing them as well. Very, very excited about all of these things. And let's learn a little bit more. Uh, so TBC and BCHCE integration, what that means? Well, we've taken TBC version 4.10, the latest version of Business Center Heavy Civil Edition was 4.12, and now they've both been uh, migrated into a single software package, Trimble Business Center, TBC version 5. Um, so uh, this update and upgrade is just like installing any other new release of TBC for both customers. It's be a separate single download. However, this time the TBC version 5 is sold across the different Trimble channels, your geospatial distribution partner or your SciTech construction distribution partner. Um, same pricing, same functionality. This made a lot of common sense to everyone involved. So there was a lot of overlap here. You can see by my uh, little, little graph there between the two channels where um, construction brought in some civil construction workflows um, and survey brought in the data processing adjustment. And it made sense just to, to offer that as a single, single package, TBC, your new geospatial survey and construction data hub. MX9 mobile mapping support. So this is new. We did in the past, or and still do, support the MX7 mobile mapping hardware system. But this is really focused on survey, survey service providers and the ultimate, not right now, but ultimate replacement of the Trident um, uh, mobile mapping software. Um, this supports the MX9 hardware that's been out um, since the beginning or middle of uh, uh, calendar year 2018. Um, and the message here is that we are creating, again, data integration, seamless integration with survey data, your mobile mapping data, into a single environment. And that environment is Trimble Business Center. We use TBC's data agnostic approach to deliverable creation, like I said. So when you get the data into TBC, use the CAD tools, use the surface and volume tools, use the point cloud classification tools on your MX9 data in version 5. What those workflows now look like, 
is you take the data from TMI, and that's the field software that runs and controls the MX9 unit. You process the trajectories in Postpack, still as a standalone. Get that SBET file, bring it into TBC, compute your um, um, uh, and correct your laser correction from uh, the MX9 hardware. Do your colorization, do your point cloud registration, and then your data is in TBC. Um, and um, from there, you could have your data live in TBC or connect to our TMX um, uh, uh, extraction and management software or a myriad of other third-party softwares from the likes of TopoDot, TerraSolid, or the big three of Autodesk, Bentley, and Esri. High-speed scanning support. So this is really exciting. So the advent of the SX-10 and the import of that data really got um, uh, an introduction of the power of the point clouds. Well, as a surveyor, if you've embraced the SX-10 and, and maybe look into um, or already do employ uh, TX-6 or TX-8 or a Faro laser scanner, we want that data now into TBC. Um, this message is um, still, just like the SX-10, uh, for survey and construction workflows. Um, this is not targeted for uh, those uh, MEP contractors out there that are doing hundreds or a thousand scans um, on a regular basis of you know intricate pipe work or anything indoors um, like that. Um, but this is for survey scanning and we want to make this like uh, any other import into TBC, just a drag and drop interface. And those scans uh, are treated like scan stations with the SX-10, if you're familiar with that. So things like station view would be supported. You can see what the laser scanner kind of saw from its perspective. Um, alongside of this uh, support comes a new plane-based targetless registration like Trimble RealWorks, if you're familiar with Trimble RealWorks. Um, it is supported of um, this T. Uh, uh, TZF and FLS data only. And the message here is that now you can scale your laser scanning data alongside your survey data. So if you're working in a, a state plane system in the United States or a UTM system with a projection, well, you import your scan data in and that scan data will scale according to that projection. So it all lives in one single environment. Here we've imported a couple of different TZF files from the TX8, you can see they're colored by scan, so there's several different colors in there. We've opened up the new plane-based registration tool in the register, uh, register scans uh, command, and with a click of a button, it looks and finds as many planes as it can, uh, common shared across those scan data, and registers them together. You can see here the roof of the house, um, perfect example of planes, the side of the house there, zoomed in, and you can see a nice tight registration of those, I think it's six TZF uh, scanned files. All right, moving on to the automated feature extraction from point clouds. Um, what this is, is now taking your laser scanning uh, data or point cloud data from any source, uh, LAS for example, get it in the TBC data agnostic tool and turn that information or turn that data into information faster. So there are two um, new routines, an automatic or a manual point-based extraction method for trees, and there's a manual method for signs and poles. So extracting information like a tree, for example, the XYZ position um, at the, the base of the tree, the center of the trunk at the base where it would intersect the ground, the height of the tree, the diameter of the canopy, and then the diameter of the tree trunk at breast height, or DBH, um, it's 1.4 meters or 4.5 feet above the ground. Um, and where that information then can get stored is in the FXL, which is nothing new for those of you who have done feature coding workflows. Um, there's a spot for attribute data in that based on feature codes. So similar uh, concepts that uh, we've been preaching and, and have featured in TBC for years, now incorporated into the scanning world and turning, um, infra, or turning point cloud data into information faster, reducing your time in the field and the office. And here's a video demo of that workflow. 
first to walk you through some feature extraction with trees. Here's a topo data set from the SX10. You launch the extract point feature command and you make a pick on the trunk of a tree. In the manual mode, you will get a single feedback of the uh, XYZ position marked by that uh, purple or, or pinkish X along with two uh, circles of uh, one as small as the trunk diameter the larger one up top is the uh, canopy or the uh, cover diameter of the uh, branches and then you get the height of the tree as well. Moving forward into the manual mo or automatic mode if you single click you will get uh, all of the trees that the algorithm can find based off of the uh, point feature classic, uh, classification of high vegetation and ground. Those are really important. They're not critical for the operation of this tool, but will definitely help with speed and performance as well. So then we'll walk you through where all of this information is then stored. You can see on the right in the attributes uh, column of the extract point feature command, you will get the option to select an attribute, what that attribute is, if it's a uh, trunk or the spread of the tree, and where that could then map to from what has been, just been extracted. And at the end, what you get is very, very quickly, I'd like to say that that was all in real time, but for this data set, it's about 45, 50 trees. I think it took about 45, 50 seconds here in real time uh, to extract all of those attributes and give it a symbol if it's been coded BT broadleaf tree in the feature code library has the symbol of that tree so very very quick way to do some uh, information extraction for trees very similar workflow for signs and poles as well the next major feature is the enhanced cutting plane workflows so uh, we've taken the concept of the cutting plane view and the plane manager which allows you to create a custom plane at any orientation, basically a custom UCS, and being able to create subplanes at intervals along a selected or existing path, for example, in alignment, or normal to that plane definition. So anything can um, have additional subplanes off of it. Um, they would either be along a path or normal to how that plane was originally defined. We have added a slide bar navigation to, to view subplanes and create subplanes into that cutting plane view. And this allows you really to view and interact with the data and extract information with digital cross sections. So when, I, when you see cutting plane workflows and subplanes and all this, think digital cross sections that you can um, draft in, create line strings, create points um, in, in your CAD environment. Here's a video demo. Here to show you a demo of the cutting plane enhancements and the cutting plane view and the plane manager enhancements is this data set. It is a tunnel and it has an alignment as you can see there. We will use that alignment and create a series of subplanes set at an interval of every five feet, five meters. And as you can see in the cutting plane view, it's reactive to the slide bar movement and you will get feedback up in the 3D view as well, where exactly you're moving. You're just, this is an SX10 data set, so you're seeing a point cloud cross section. Um, all of the cutting planes there um, and those subplanes all based and tied off of to that one uh, alignment. This can also be taken vertically. So if you had a building application with different floors, different levels, for example, you could create a plane in the XY uh, world coordinate system and then extrude it upwards. I've talked about um, planes to the normal definition of, uh, of the underlying plane. There you can see we've created a series of planes that go upward vertically as well. And a big application here would be for that linear corridor roadway design information. So that is surface information. This uh, cutting plane views everything that you would be able to see in like plan view, for example. It's just a custom UCS. Um, you're slicing through there that surface, and I'll play the rest of the video. Um, you can see 
you get the intersection of where the surface is sliced by the plane in the cutting plane view. So a lot of new applications here. Think digital cross sections. I'm very excited about this one being able to interact and utilize data and manipulate data and draft a little bit easier in TBC version 5. And then localization. This is a big one for um, some legacy customers and some potentially uh, new customers that, that don't even know about TBC today. So what this is, is that we've added custom commands to TBC. You can script them using the Iron Python language. You can access all of the TBC objects and classes, everything that the TBC devs have. Um, this increases customer and user engagement and also could potentially be new business opportunities for developers out there. If you in your organization uh, have the capabilities or the interest in um, doing some custom programming, this allows you to create custom commands using all of the TBC objects. Um, a bit of a disclaimer here, what this isn't is a uh, click recorder, you know, where you'd string commands along, or the ability to edit existing commands. Um, for example, if you wanted to create a surface and have that surface be named something specific um, by default, you would have to recreate the surface command with that instruction to call it whatever your, your targeted name is. So this allows brand new custom routines in um, TBC version 5. A bit more information on that. There is a specific macros Trimble community for education, questions, and distribution. If you search Trimble macros and extensions in Google or any uh, your favorite search engine, you'll be able to find this page. There are several macros distributed within TBC version 5 as examples, and that's things that you can open up, take a look at under the hood, see how the developer did that, and learn from. And TBC Survey Advanced Edition is required to write and read these macros. So anybody with that um, Survey Advanced Edition or higher can um, utilize or compose their own macros. Additional features and enhancements. Um, yes, there is a lot more exemplified by this right here. Good time to press the old pause button or take a note or print these slides out. Um, you will notice in the uh, YouTube channel link that there will be a link to this presentation in PDF form. So you'll be able to print this out or utilize it however you want for reference. Um, the items in yellow are the items that uh, I've already talked about, kind of our major main message points. The items in blue are other new features and enhancements, and I'll give you a little bit of a highlight here now through them. First of all, a slide that uh, doesn't need a title. This is the new TBC version 5. We've done a lot to it in terms of UI and um, uh, UX, user experience. So if you start TBC, the start page has been refreshed with a little bit of a remembrance of your past projects that you have opened with a screenshot there. You'll also notice in the upper our, uh, upper right corner, as well of the in the upper right corner of the projects, there is a login that allows you to create your and log in uh, to your Trimble Connect account, uh, external service. So that will be. Um, uh, retained as active and logged in so you can leverage the Trimble Connect services such as Sync Manager, Publishing to Clarity, Background Maps, um, much much easier now uh, than ever before. As well you'll notice the theme of TBC has kind of changed. We will still ship with that what we've called quote traditional theme um, but a lot of the icons now here in this new light theme have changed and those can be toggled in the options menu of, uh, of TBC between traditional and light. Uh, new icons, refreshed look, um, you'll notice there's a lot more on the quick access toolbar up top as well as the status bar down below on the lower right. Anything that we uh, deemed that was a kind of toggleable, um, for example, those toggle background maps or the uh, uh, selection methods, whether it's the polygon or the rectangular select, those will now reside down below in the uh, status bar. 
increased commitment to uh, being interoperable with Autodesk products, and that's both AutoCAD and Civil 3D. Um, real nice one here, we can now give you the option to export line styles as true AutoCAD 2D polylines in the DXF and DWG export. As well in that export option, you can add a uniform suffix and prefix to all layers being kicked out into that DXF or DWG, and specify the decimal precision uh, of geometry included in that DXF DWG. Looking for a little consistency there um, with uh, and customization with um, your DXF and DWG exports. We also now ship with Autodesk native dot uh, lin line style file. So when you're choosing your line styles, you can um, in the line style manager, you can uh, now drop down, change the search type to dot lin, and you will see the AutoCAD line style file type now ship with TBC. You use those, you move data back and forth between TBC and Civil 3D. I guarantee you that the uh, uh, line style, the line weights, the colors will, um, will be the same now. And drawing and insertion units are now written in the DWG and DXF. Something for our North American cadastral surveyors here is uh, an ALTA report enhancement. So now create ALTA compliant reports with the ALTA allowable uh, relative precision um, report testing standards uh, that uh, grants for a allowable tolerance with a constant and then a scalar or PPM there. You can see in the screenshot on the right with a precision ratio and it will determine the pass fail criteria. This is designed with the guidance of ALTA authorities and customers to uh, allows your data to be defendable in court and reduce your liability and um, be able to speak to the confidence of your results um, more in TBC version 5. Traverse enhancements. Um, so we've made um, massive, massive collections of data a lot easier to discern where the traverse runs are. So we've changed those traverse back sites and foresights vector colors to a purple for clear delineation. We have added a downward facing triangle as the traverse station symbol, as you can see there on the right, 0 0.104. And then we also added the perceived traverse direction with the arrow um, pointing which way the traverse was entered or inter interpreted within TBC. We've also added optional directional arrows uh, for GNSS and total station measurements. Those can be toggleable in the user options. Increasing the capability of the tunneling module, particularly around point clouds and the S610. So now we've made it a lot easier to create um, as-built points and assign as-built points from point clouds with the sampling routine of point clouds built right in. You can, um, we've enhanced the as-built report with volume analysis. We now support as-built meshing in the drafting and exporting routines. And then you can visualize alignment and corridors from, say, a roading corridor project within the tunnel view. There, that screenshot on the left. So a lot of new things coming with the tunneling module. And that's one of those vertical specialty solutions. Happy to work with Dallaire on this one to be able to fully support JXL um, uh, UAV data from the UX11 fixed wing system from Dallaire. So this is just a drag and drop UX11 uh, JXL file where you can adjust and create point clouds, DSM, and ortho mosaics within Trimble's aerial photogrammetry module or UAS master. And this again speaks to our data integration message integrating the UX11 data with your survey data in TBC's CAD environment. This supports now both the PPK and non-PPK GNSS. So thank you to our friends over at Delaire for working with us on this. Really happy to add this capability within TBC. And you can see there my message of data agnostic that I, I've talked about a couple times here. Um, that is the extract point feature command on some trees from some UX11 data flown. All right, so we've been busy over the last several months with TBC version 5 release. Um, I've, sp I've thrown a lot at you here. Um, where can you get help? Well, YouTube, you've already found us on YouTube. YouTube's a great one. 
but in addition, our TBC geospatial website. Pretty simple to remember, trimble.com slash TBC, where you'll find the latest release notes, readme updates, product bulletins. There's a really nice uh, white paper there on the uh, changes to the GNSS baseline processor that we introduced in version 4 and have, and have improved ever since, as well as the tutorials are posted there. Um, we've added three new tutorials for um, version 5, bringing the total, I believe, to over 30. But what they are, if you're not familiar, is uh, sample data that you can um, bring into TBC, as well as a PDF with step-by-step -step instructions with screenshots that really walks you through and highlights everything that you can do in TBC and TBC version 5. You found us on YouTube. Um, our TBC survey and construction channel. Um, we've got about 250 plus videos there as well. Uh, unlike this video, we will respect your time and make it a little bit uh, shorter on you, a couple of minutes here and there, uh, introducing uh, new features, workflows, things like that. They're supposed to be kind of quick hitters um, for you to digest and understand easy. Uh, really nice to have these up with a second monitor if you've got it in your office, um, have TBC up on one and being able to walk through a uh, YouTube video and the other as well as monthly power hours. Um, what these are, are a uh, workflow. We take a professional from the industry or somebody within Trimble and uh, work alongside product management and break down that workflow for about 40, 45 minutes, a um, couple of live Q&A uh, at the beginning. Just talk about that workflow, introduce you to um, TBC a little bit more uh, in depth. Those have been going on since the beginning part of 2015, and so there's um, you know three plus years of them as I as I sit here and talk to you now. Um, so all of these are available for free. They're archived with data where uh, where uh, where we were able to with the presentation. Really great great resource for TBC supported workflows. I mentioned the community for the macros. There is a TVC community page as well. Um, nice user forum where um, representatives from the TVC team, whether it's marketing or engineering, um, and users will um, post and answer questions. It's really great to see more and more users jumping on there, answering each other's questions, really creating a forum feel for the TVC community. We also will post our tips of the week um, towards the end of every week, we try to get out a little tidbit, maybe a, um, a little hidden feature, something where maybe you didn't, wouldn't have stumbled across it naturally uh, along your uh, venturing into TBC. So those are posted on the community as well. And then a direct way to reach our customers is the TBC news feed in the TBC start page where we'll post things like product webinars, trainings, announcements there, tips of the week, power hours, for example. So there's a lot, a lot going on in the resources available to us, um, as well as, uh, don't have a slide for it, but your number one resource is always the people. So talk to your uh, Trimble representative, talk to your Trimble distribution partner, talk to your site tech dealer um, about what you're seeing here. And if you've got any questions, uh, if they don't know, they can put you in, in touch with the right person. So there's a lot going on here, a lot of great uh, new features in TBC version 5. I want to thank you. I hope you enjoyed the presentation, and uh, we'll see you in TBC version 5. Thank you.